We back up in this thing, man. Champions League match day two just concluded, and it was damn near homecoming week. I'm talking about that boy Rob Lewandowski went back to Germany to play his ex club in Bayern Munich. That boy Erling Hot Erling Holland. That boy Erling Holland. We gonna talk about him a little bit later. That boy Erling Holland played his ex club in BVB Borussia Dortmund. Liverpool boys bounced back and got three points this week, thankfully. Chelsea is still ass. Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, the PSG trio is out in full force. And of course, them Bayern Munich boys lays wood on Barcelona once a goddamn game. First, we go start it off with the goal of the week nominees. And I'm going to announce what I think the goal of the week was at the end of the video. Let me know down in the comments what y'all think the goal of the week was. First nominee, we got Arthur Gomez from Sporting. He went on a goddamn dribble move, frenzy, nutmeg, a defender from Tottenham, and then scored that thing on them boys to increase Sporting's lead 2-0. Then we had that boy John Stones from Man City with an absolute Goal, 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 goal from outside ABZ. We had Mr. Erling Holland with a goddamn flying kung fu sitting on the air Bruce Lee karate kick goal. And then we had or six goal against AC Milan off of Pekovic's beautiful last assist, man. Stay tuned through the end of the video to find out my pick for the goal of the week. And let me know down in the comments what's y'all pick for this week's goal of the week. So we gonna start off with the Group A fixtures, man. To pull up the standings, Napoli is sitting at top of Group A with seven goddamn points, followed behind by Liverpool with three. And then Ajax is right behind Liverpool at three in third place. And then we got them Ranger boys with zero goddamn points. Liverpool versus Ajax. That boy Mo Salah scored 17 minutes in. About time Mohamed Salah showed up and did something. He scored off a Diogo Jota assist shot it right in that right corner. That boy Kudis, I'm talking about. He was dribbling across the box and out of nowhere, he just boom, shot him a goddamn rocket. It bounced off the crossbar and ended up going in with a banger of a shot to tie the ball game up. 1-1, I was streaming when this happened and everybody in the chat was blowing their mind when they boy Kuda shot that shot. And I was like, bro, don't tell me that Liverpool is finna tie with Ajax, bro. We need three points. All of a sudden, 89th minute. That boy matched it for his first goal of the season, hit him a header. It went in and then they hit it out, but it turns out the ball ended up crossing the line. Liverpool boys advance over AX, get them three points. And of course, you already know, before the game, everybody was, AX is gonna beat y'all, bro. They gonna beat Liverpool, bro, after the game. Why y'all happy? It's just AX. You know how people is, bro. Liverpool boys with that dub. And then it brings us to the last game of Group A. We got them Ranger boys and them Napoli boys, or should I say Papley? I ain't gonna lie, hating aside, them Papley boys been looking dangerous as hell so far, man. My boy James Sands, American boy for Rangers, conceded him a penalty and got red carded and sent the hell off the pitch. I was like, no, James, what are you doing? But number 20 from Papley got his ass packed the hell up and then they had to shoot the kick again and then he got his ass packed the hell up once a goddamn again two times in a row. Shout out that man McGregor, bro. He played some D. The crowd was teeth the hell up. Then Papley gets another penalty in a 68 minute this is a third penalty kick penalty shot of the game but this time that politano dude ended up knocking it in they got the penalty off of a handball bro so then in the 85th minute that boy raspadori hit him a little give and go go and yeah it, it was it was it's basically over now 2-0 oh, in the 85th minute yeah this is basically over and then dumbele added insult to injury Scoring again like in the 90th plus added time minutes to make it 3-0 over the Rangers boys. I don't see them Rangers boys getting a single dub in this group stage, to be honest with you. Group B, Club Brews is sitting at the top of the standings with six points. Shout out to them Brews boys. And then that second and third, we got Bayern Leverkusen and Atletico Madrid. Them boys just tied with three points. And then in last, we got FC Porto sitting with zero points. And I sadly chose Porto to win the, to win the group stage. Why? I don't know. I don't know much about any of these teams in this group stage. But obviously, I took an L on that prediction. I ain't gonna lie. I took an L on that prediction. But yeah, Leverkusen and Atletico, the game was scoreless until like the 84 minute. And I knew this game would be like this. Any game involving Atletico, it's probably gonna be a goddamn snooze fest. Both of Leverkusen's goals were scored three minutes back to back from each other. Andrich scored in the 84th minute for his first Champions League goal. Shout out to that boy Andrich. And then Diaby scored in the 87th minute to finish them boys off off of a beautiful ass friend Pong assist across the box. Shout out that man, friend Pong. I had him on my Fro Boys 
team on FIFA when I had that manager career mode. So shout out that boyfriend Pong. This is only Bayer Leverkusen's second win of this season, by the way, through the whole season. This is only their second win. Just to put things in perspective for the Madrid, Atletico Madrid boys, Atletico. Y'all need to change something. I don't know what the hell it is, but that 3 5 2, it's not working out. Porto and Club Bruise, boy. Them Club Bruise boys teed the hell up. Juggler opened up the scoring early. 15 minutes in, he had him a penalty. He banged that hoe in. Club Bruise was already up 1 0 before you knew it. 30 minutes later, that man Juggler was right in front of the opponent's goal. And then he was low key like fighting somebody over the ball. And he was in the middle of falling down. And he passed that hoe at the last minute before he fell to Kamal Sowa. And that Sowa dude ended up knocking it in with his first goal for Club Bruce to get them boys up 2-0. Less than five minutes later, Skov Olsen hit him a tap in off of a cross. And to add another insult to injury, Antonio Nusa, a 17-year-old, playing in his first Champions League game, had him a uno mi uno a little one-on-one, -on -one, and ended up banging that thing in the 89th minute. Club Bruce with Porto ass photo zero. Which brings us to group C, which is supposed to be the hardest group in these group stages, according to y'all, not me. I didn't say it. Of course, then Bayern boys are sitting at the top of the list with six points. And then we got Barca and Inter at two and three, tied at three points. And then, of course, you got Pleasing sitting at zero. I don't think Pleasing is gonna get any Champions League dubs this season. We gonna start it off with Pleasing and Inter Milan, bro. Is this Pleasing Club really supposed to be here? They have had only two shots on target in 180 plus minutes of gameplay bro or is this club really supposed to be here y'all already know into me long with that ass jacko old ass scored about the smoothest easiest goal of his career in the 20th minute and then please had a player get kicked off the pitch with a red card they played with 10 men at the 60th minute and of course intercapitalized with the dumfries goal less than 10 minutes later off of a mean ass counter attack bro enter over please in 2-0 byron in barcelona now i did a watch along on this you want to see the watch along go to twitch now we all know the history behind Bayern in Barcelona. Basically, Bayern Munich owns the whole club of Barcelona. Now, I was asking my chat. I looked at the previous four encounters. I'm talking about the score was three in a row, two times in a row. It was 3-0, 3-0, two times in a row. And we all know that 8-2 game not too long ago. I was like, damn. Bayern basically own y'all, right? Everybody in the chat, them Barcelona boys, they was, bro, it's a different team. We was rebuilding now. It's a different team now. We finna win today. We finna whoop they ass. When I tell you, them Barcelona boys was talking shit. They was talking. They was running their mouth. And we all know how the game ended. I ain't gonna lie. First half was loud. The first half didn't have any goal score, but it was an entertaining first half. But it was low-key sloppy from both. I wouldn't say from both teams. It, it was low-key, like, chaotic as hell. Every time somebody had the ball in the opponent's end of the field, they always either get ripped or defense or a bad shot or a bad pass. It was chaotic, but it made for some good entertainment. And in the 50th minute, this is where the ties changed. That boy Hernandez had scored for Byron off of a corner. And then, like, four minutes later, that boy Leroy Sané was free in the middle of the pitch off of a good-ass pass by that boy Jamal. Leroy Sané knocked it up. 2-0 in four minutes real quick. And then that man, Pedri. Pedri. He had the perfect chance to get Barcelona back in the game to close the gap. This man missed the easiest chip shot he probably would have had in his life. He missed it. And yeah, that deflated all the air out there in Barcelona, boys. That's y'all wonder, kid. Don't think I forgot about that boy Rob either. Because he was nothing up too. Keep a spade a spade. That boy was nothing up. He was playing like he was goddamn scared. Petri, that, that's y'all wonder kid right there. Come on now, he's supposed to knock them down. Bayern Munich over them Barcelona boys. Dos a cero. Group D, we have Sporting CP sitting at the top of the list this match day, man. I'm talking about Sporting at the top with six points. Tottenham and Frankfurt at two and three, both with three points. And then we got Marseille sitting at the bottom at zero. I expected more from Marseille because y'all told me Marseille had a good ass squad, but them boys have yet to accumulate a point this far in the Champions League. Sporting and Tottenham played and oh my gosh. Tottenham, cock boys. The game was nil nil basically the whole game. And then Paulinho in the 90th minute, last minute header goal to win the game. At least I thought them sporting boys wasn't done scoring on them cock boys. Arthur Gomez dribbling through that D nutmeg. Ugh, knocked that hoe in. 2-0 against Tottenham. The cock boys was sad as hell. Sporting advances over Tottenham. Dos Acero, another Dos Acero. Then we had Marseille versus Frankfurt. That boy Lindstrom for Frankfurt ended up scoring in the 43rd minute off of a veiled clear ball. You hate to see it. Marseille didn't score again. Frankfurt advanced over them boys. 
Neal. Group E, we have AC Milan at the top with four points. They ain't got six points. Everybody else had six points at the top of the groups. AC Milan got four. We got Dynamo Zagreb at second with three. Then we got Salzburg in third with two. And then we got none other than Chelsea FC at the bottom of the group stage with uno point. I don't know how many times I gotta tell y'all boys, but Chelsea is ass as hell, man. We gonna start off with that AC Milan and Zagreb game, and of course, I think we all predicted that AC Milan was gonna win this game. Giroud, 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 like that's that's the French Giroud, like 2018 World Cup Giroud. I swear, every time I see that man, I be like, damn, how many teams has this man played for? That man knocked him a penalty in at the 45th minute to get them boys a 1-0 advantage. Then the open a half, that boy Rafael Leal with a great pass to that boy Salamaker, and Salamaker ended up. Hitting that ball in, AC Milan is up 2-0 already. In the 56th minute, this was the goal of the week nominee. That boy Pekovic had him a beautiful ass assist to that man Orsic. And that man Orsic ended up knocking that hoe down to try to close the lead. But that man Paul Bigger from AC Milan say, nah, we're going to go ahead and put this out of reach. He hit a little give and go and hit him a rocket of a goal. In the 77th minute, AC Milan over Zagreb. 3-1. Chelsea and Salzburg. This is Chelsea's first game with their new manager, that Potter dude. That boy Raheem opened the scoring up at the beginning of the second half off of a ball that was meant for a booming anger. That boy Raheem say, huh, don't mind if I do. Uh, ended up hitting that hole in. Chelsea was up 1-0. And I bet y'all was just so confident, right? Y'all was so happy. Like, yes, we're finna get three points. No. Thiago Silva missed a tackle. And they made y'all pay. Pass that hoe inside the box of that man Okafor, and Okafor ended up knocking that hoe down. Chelsea only gets one point. Salzburg also only gets one point, but I don't care about Salzburg. Chelsea, y'all are ass. Group F, we got Real Madrid, of course, at the top of the group with six points. We got Shakhtar in second place with four. We got Celtic in third with one, and then we got Leipzig in fourth at the bottom with zero points. We gonna start off with Shakhtar and Celtic. Ten minutes in, if Celtic boys started a mean ass run off a of clearance, I'm talking about bro just ran up and. Ooh, just kick that hell slung it downfield. Counter attack that Japanese, what well, that, that Asian dude. I don't know his na ethnicity, nationality. Sorry, don't attack me. That Asian dude ended up scoring. Well, it was a deflection. It got deflected, so it counted as an own goal. But technically, they scored because of the Asian dude, bro. Had them boys up 1 0. And then that boy Mudrick back at it again. We seen what he did against Leipzig last match day. That boy had a one on one with the goalkeeper. I can shoot it right, I can shoot it left, I'm just gonna shoot it over you, no respect. He straight ran up, ugh, shot it at the top, shot it straight over the top of the goalkeeper. That's a goddamn goal. Tie ball game, 1-1, one, one, and the game actually ended in a tie. 1-1, one, one, nobody else scored after the 29th minute. Real Madrid versus Leipzig. It wasn't looking too pretty for them Real Madrid boys with Kareem Benzema gone, bro. We all know they a different team when they boy Kareem gone. And they actually ended up getting it together late, late, late in the game in the 80th minute. That boy Vinicius to Valverde across the box and Valverde hit him a goal. And that boy was teed the hell up. No cap. He was showing all types of passion. You love to see that type of passion from a player when they score for their club, bro. That boy was teed the hell up. And then in like one minute added time, that boy Tony Cruz off a set piece pass to Asensio. Asensio ended up knocking the hell in. Real Madrid wins. Dos Acero. Damn, it's been like three Dos Aceros this week, ain't it? Group G. We know who at the top of the standards of Group G, man. You got Man City at the top with six points. Then you got Borussia Dortmund right behind them with three points. And then for third and fourth place, we got Copenhagen and Sevilla tied up with one point each. First game we gonna start off with is Man City and Borussia Dortmund. Erling Haaland is back playing his old club. BVB actually started off the scoring. That boy Drew Bellingham with a header off of a pass from that boy Marco Royce. They went up 1-0 and there was no doubt in my mind. There was no doubt in my mind that Man City wasn't finna come back. They do this every game. Every time they are down, 2-0, 1-0, it don't matter. They gonna come back and that's exactly what the hell happened. That boy John Stones. Outside the box. Goal, 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 goal. You know what I'm saying? And after a goal like that, you know damn well, man, City finna score again. If you score a screamer like that, they have no choice but to score again. 84th minute, Cancelo with a perfectly placed pass. They put Erling Holland hopped up their slow motion kung fu style sitting in the air i'm talking about bruce lee type zlatan type kick that hole scored it inside the goal to advance over borussia dortmund 2-1 
Erling Holland is special, bro. There's, there's nothing else you can say about that. He's special. He showed that boy Rob Lewandowski how to score against your old club. Because Rob was low-key selling for Barcelona. Copenhagen and Sevilla, that game was a nil-nil draw. And then Group Ace, the last group stage, Potty Sajama and Benfica are respectively 1 and 2. Both sitting at the table with 6 points. And then Juventus and High 4 are both respectively 3 and 4 sitting at the bottom of the table with 0 points. What the hell is going on with them Juventus boys? Benfica! dominated they ass. Albeit, Juventus did score four minutes in off of a long ass set piece cross and then that boy Malik ended up headering it in. And then right before the half ended, uh, Benfica had them a penalty and that boy Joe Almaro ended up knocking that hoe in. And he was talking shit after he hit that hoe too. I'm talking about he running around the stadium towards Juventus crowd. He was doing ease. He was doing his cuff ears like, yeah, I want to hear you. And Bonucci wasn't having it. That boy Bonucci ran up on him everything. And I'm glad that somebody from Juventus ran up on him for that. I really didn't like that. I didn't like that show, but Benucci ran up to him, you know, tried to tell him off. The referee gave Mr. Mario a yellow card for that celebration, too. And then in the 55th minute, that boy Neres ended up hitting the game-winning goal. He knocked it in off of a deflection for Benfica to beat Juventus 2-1, to one, man. What is going on with Juventus? And then for the last game of the evening, we got them Haifa boys versus Potty Sajama. And coming into this game, we knew them Haifa boys weren't serious about playing no goddamn football. When they first got announced to play PSG, y'all know the story of them players posting on Instagram, I call Dibs on Neymar's jersey. I call Dibs on Leo Neymar's jersey. Man, do y'all have any pride? Do y'all got any dignity? They did score first. They scored first. I ain't gonna lie. Pops to them Haifa boys for that. They did score first. That boy Cherry scored off of a beautiful ass pass. All he had to do was jump and kick that hoe. 24 minutes in. Shout out that boy Cherry. You already know the crowd was teed the hell up, bro. And I'm talking about them boys was wicked. Then they scored again. But he got called back, sadly. He got called back, bro. He was offside. He got called back. That whole Loki could have changed history on some stuff. And after the goal got called back, come on, man. You already know the deal. Lionel. Mbappe, Neymar, the Eminem trio, all three of them got goals to go ahead over them Haifa boys 3-1, bro. You can't just you can't dispute it. At the end of the day, they got the most deadly trio in football. When them boys show up, it's raps, man. You know what I'm saying? And that brings us to the end of this match day review, man. What is my goal of the week for this week, match day two? Come on, bro. That man early. Highlands look karate kick Bruce Lee frying dragon gelatin kick goal to win the game. Come on, bro. Early Holland. Goal of the week could be damn near goal of all the group stages. That hoe was a live ass goal. Hey, appreciate everybody for tuning in. Let me know down in the comments what was our favorite game of the week and how y'all team did. If you do got a team to change this video.